owed over a hundred million dollars in public education funding. She vetoed our public school teachers' pay raises. The same year, she gave her own staff 25% pay increases. That is the worst kind of politics, and we are going to escort her out the door. We're going to escort her out the door. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it, y'all. All right, calm down out there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's always good to call your opponent a whore. Uh, Vincent Sheehan, who's running against Nikki Haley for governor of uh, South Carolina, uh, calling Nikki Haley a whore. And the media, silent. Uh, you have a prospective congressional candidate uh, yesterday uh, calling uh, uh, Mr. Tillis in North Carolina, running for the Senate, and Uncle Tom. Media couldn't care less. But you say macaca and you're a Republican, you're dead in the water. Joining us now is Hank Scheinkopf, Democratic strategist, Newsmax analyst, and president of Scheinkopf Communications. Terrible double standard here? Not so nice, but you know, look, there's a guy in New York who's running for Congress against Carolyn Maloney, who said, uh, who called her, who intimated that she was an alcoholic, wasn't very nice. In political campaigns, the worst kind of rhetoric tends to prevail. We're going back in time to the days of Abraham Lincoln, when Stephen Douglas, whoever the papers across the country portrayed him as an ape, an animal, and who knows what else, or they excoriated Al Smith in 1928 because he was a Catholic. We've reached that nadir of discussion. Okay, but you make a statement on rape. You say macaca. If you're a Republican, you're out. Uh, if you're a Joe Biden and you talk about race, and Obama's the first queen uh, African-American ever to run for president, education's better in Iowa than D.C. because you have no minorities in Iowa. Uh, now whore and, and, and uh, Uncle Tom. Nothing happens to you, only uh, if you're a Republican. There, there is a double standard, and it is enhanced because we live in a sewer. Public life does not <laughs> attract the best class of people today. We're not dealing with the best group. And the things they say are not less about doing great things for the country or the state or the, or the district. It's about winning the election. All right. Now, uh, speaking, uh, we talked earlier before we get to a specific, sure. the report that uh, a high-ranking Obama White House uh, administration official referred to Benjamin Netanyahu as chicken blank. Blank. Um, and you say that could hurt oh, no question. in Listen, the election. Absolutely. With the evangelicals. In, in marginal states where there are evangelical Christians who are supportive of the state of Israel, that kind of behavior will only force a turnout. What the guys need to do in Washington who are Democrats to get it through their thick heads is they do not want to have turnouts in marginal districts or in states where the numbers are close. They don't want that because if they do, they will likely lose. Interesting. All right, let's talk about Georgia. Sure. I heard the devil it's on went, my mind. I heard the way. devil went down if to you, Georgia. He was looking if, for a soul to if you, steal. If you go to Tbilisi in Georgia, they have statues we of got a, We can no, do this don't. all day, apparently, they folks. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, Jimmy Carter's grandson is uh, running against Nathan Deal, the yeah. Republican, and, uh, and Deal has, uh, has a lead by most accounts right now. Sure, and it's been consistent over the last couple of weeks, two points plus. It's within the margin of error, but Georgia to elect a uh, Democrat governor hasn't done so since 2003. It's the last time a Democrat sat in the state house in Georgia. I would not hock my, my house on this one. I would say, Nathan Deal, you got another four years. Uh, Carter, come back another time. Change your name and open a restaurant. <laughs> and give out free peanuts, maybe. Give out free peanuts. All right, ball Colorado game. Senate race. Uh, Mark Udall and Corey Gardner. Um, you, you the other day predicted correctly before the New York Times right. uh, reported that uh, Ch Shaheen was in trouble in New Hampshire, sure. and, and that has come to fruition. How do you see Gardner and uh, Udall? The problem here is the publicly published polls are showing a seven-point distance between the Republican and the Democrat in favor of the Republican in a state that is, could be kind of prophetic. That in New Hampshire should, could be clear bellwethers of what is going on in the country. People in Colorado seem to have made up their mind. In New Hampshire, they have not made up their minds yet. That tells you that something extraordinary is happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, it, it is interesting. So, what do you what do you see is uh, when you look at the bellwethers and and where we're headed as we're now six days away from the uh, the, the Democrats uh, the are in real trouble in the heartland. They're in real trouble in the mountain states. They're in, you know we have other states that the, the Dakotas. There's one that where the Senate is already you know according to polls it's over for the Re the Republicans are grabbing it up. They're in real serious trouble. Now, if they're in real serious trouble in the Northeast, in New England with New Hampshire, it's really going to be a very big Republican year. But again, Pat Cadell, 1980, proves very simply in his polling that the entire electorate can switch very quickly in a period of 
hours or days. And uh, that's what they did to Jimmy Carter. The end result, we know, Ronald Reagan in a landslide. Yeah, and, and apparently the polls switched uh, very quickly on uh, because of turnout on Romney as well. No question they, they thought they, would, they had it going well, in. Well, I never thought they did, but I'm a majority of a lot. All right, there you go. Hank Scheinkopf, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're just six days away, and appreciate it, Hank. Coming up next, it's the Malsberg panel. We'll talk about all of this and much, much more right here on Newsmax Television.